This episode is brought to you by PopCultureZone.com. For all your cleaning and pressing needs and as low as $5.99 a book, be sure to check them out. With over 8,000 books cleaned and pressed, PopCultureZone.com. What's going on, guys? It's Brian Jack with Submits Comics, and this, of course, is that top 10 back issue list that you guys know so well. We've been doing this for quite a few weeks right now, and we're back with another great one. We're talking about 10 back issues that always could be added to your collection. Although this is a top 10, we always say these picks get added to that master list that creates that list to be on the lookout for whenever you're at your local comic shop, right? That's right. We're sitting here getting ready to put together that second volume of our great ebook. Volume one is available right now at simplementscomics.com for the low price of $1.95, giving you more than 100 picks of books to be on the lookout for, as well as our own analysis, what we like to look for in the market, as well as spotting those trends that we think are going to be big in the coming years. And all of that is what goes into coming up with these top 10 lists. Right. And it's also important to know that this list not only in this video, but if you want to see that full list, you can also see it at simplemanscomics.com with available links to eBay to get your copies from there as well. Those are affiliate links. So we get a little bit of money back that goes back to support the channel. But we're going to get into the list right now, starting with number 10. Coming at the bottom of the list this week, we get Far Sector number one. This is a book that we talked about way before even final order cutoff, one that we thought was definitely one to pick up. It's got that Green Lantern tie-in, but we also got another female lantern. What else can you tell us about this one, Jack? Well, yeah, you know, a lot of people were high on this book, and we saw the cover A as well as the subsequent regular price variants shot up to around $15 to $20 each. And then this book saw a sharp crash back down to cover price. But a lot of people don't know why that crash happened uh, a lot contributed to the fact that maybe people weren't as on board with this or you hear the speculator pump and dump argument but the reality of what happened was stores didn't order that much of this book and diamond was left with a lot of reorderable copies sitting in the warehouse once the demand of new comic book day hit and people were grabbing far sector number one up and those prices were shooting up stores reordered those copies from diamond and then there was a second wave of this book almost creating two release days or two new comic book days and we've seen that happen before and the market doesn't tend to pick up on this because that is not a real indicating factor of popularity or not so i love that this book is covered price right now i love that people are sleeping on it um i think it's an amazing story i think the character is excellent um great new addition uh to the lanterns and you know we just saw at boom studios uh, head of marketing, Arun Singh, who's a friend of the channel, recently tweeted with everything going on in this country right now. He said, comics needs Far Sector as a series. And that's a, a major ringing endorsement from essentially a competitor talking about a, a DC series. So for that reason, as well as the, the upcoming Green Lantern television show on HBO Max, which is sure to bring in a host of lanterns, I really like this as a long-term play. Hitting us at the nine spot this week, we get a twofer with Justice League 30 and Justice League 31. We talk about common politics. We talk about first appearances. A lot of people know about that Green Lantern 20, but this also gets brought up in the conversation where you get that first full appearance of Jessica Cruz. Also in 31, you get that first appearance of her as Power Ring, right? Absolutely. And I like um, Green Lantern 20. Not only is it a double-sized anniversary issue, but it's, you know, it's got square, the square bound cover. Uh, it's, it's oftentimes in really good shape. The incentive is difficult to find. Uh, and it was the first book that ever got associated with the first appearance of Jessica Cruz. Um, so of course, we're still talking lanterns here and we're talking about the one who I think is the most marketable because oftentimes DC uses this logo at the beginning of movies kind of as a bumper, similar to how we do in our YouTube videos. And it'll show all of these vast characters from right front and center is Jessica Cruz as Green Lantern. And I think because of that, I really look at her as a very marketable character because for them to put her front and center like that shows where they view her. Because of that, I think that, like you said, we don't play these comics politics. You got to kind of look at it for what it is. And Green Lantern 20 has already shot up in value. And it's a book I love more than for the character appearance, for the story. It's an amazingly written story by Jeff Johns. And what we've seen over the last couple of years is 
this Justice League issues have started to creep up in value, specifically Justice League 31, which was a book that was kind of an afterthought. Um, and because of that, a lot of these were cover price pickups for so long and honestly are probably still in back issue bins for cover price. But because of where this character has kind of gone, they've risen in value. I think a lot of people aren't aware of it. Um, and it's a great indicator of what the market can do for this character. So if we see Jessica Cruz, whether it's on a streaming service or in a movie, uh, these are sure to spike. I would be on the lookout for all three of those issues, but those Justice League issues in specific, uh, for sure. We just talked about Justice League 40 from the New 52. Now we're talking about 30 and 31, and we're going to be talking about another issue from the New 52 Justice League run later. I think, Brian, that is one of the most slept-on runs as far as key issues being found. Yeah, not to mention, especially in that Dark Side War, that Jason Fabak art is freaking fantastic. And speaking of Jess Cruz, we talked about it recently on the Bolo Show and other videos that are on this channel, how great Justice League Odyssey is right now and how yes. up front and center Jessica Cruz is in that as well. Definitely, definitely be on the lookout for issues 12 and 13 uh, of the current Justice League Odyssey run. Coming in next on the list, we get Defenders number 28. This is a book that's seen some hype kind of come back down again but we also have the first appearance of starhawk in this one that's right we're not talking rambo we're not talking rocky but we're still talking stallone because we're talking starhawk and i think that this is a character where we saw this kind of be a popular spec play coming into the mcu when guardians of the galaxy first got announced and it didn't really play out um it, it became very clear that Kevin Feige and James Gunn, they had a different idea for what they wanted the Guardians to be. And even though Starhawk was the leader of the Guardians traditionally, um, they went a different direction with the more modern Star-Lord character as the leader of the Guardians. And we certainly see how it played out well. But in Guardians of the Galaxy 2, we got that original team put together. We also got Miley Cyrus voicing one of the characters. Ming and Rames. Yeah, there are, and there are indications that we are going to see this team again. Um, and it seems like most of the comic market has forgotten about it, largely because of James Gunn's dismissal following uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 2 and then his foray into DC Comics with the upcoming Suicide Squad 2. But James Gunn is back, and there is going to be Guardians of the Galaxy 3, so we're going to get Thor involved. And I still think that Sylvester Stallone, um, who... Certainly he's getting up there in age, and you got to hope that his health maintains, but certainly could land a role in this movie. And with where this book has dropped down to in price, it would, it would be ready in line to show major gains uh, come MCU time. But here's the thing. This is an iconic character, and whether or not we see Stallone in this role or not, or whether one day we get a prequel where we see a young character playing what Stallone uh, was back when he was young, I, I still think Starhawk has a lot of legs and it's massively affordable compared to the hype from a couple years ago. Yeah, and when it comes to MCU, you never know what you get, right? They could freaking bring some new Starhawk in and we already know that they said that the next Guardians of the movie will probably be the last one with the current team, so never know. It's definitely worth picking up, especially when people aren't talking about it anymore. And that's at number seven. This is a book that people are still talking about. We're talking about Once in Future number one. Yeah, now we talked about the Boom Studios Netflix first look deal. And we talked about how bullish we are on these Netflix properties. Uh, Boom Studios really was selective coming off of their first look deal with Disney by making sure that they did a first look deal that was actually going to come to fruition. And unfortunately, very little with the Disney deal did. Looks like they're off the ground running with Netflix. A lot of rumors about different properties from Bone Parish to Something's Killing the Children. But the book that has consistently been in demand with collectors who are anticipating eventually seeing kind of this fantasy comedy kind of play out is Once in Future number one. Um, this, you know, this book has seen reader buzz since the day that it released and has not dropped off. Originally, if you remember, when this book came out, there were plenty of copies available from first print. The later printings were sold out. The first printing stayed on the shelf as it was part of the Boom Guarantee program. And what I think a lot of comic buyers, Brian, didn't realize is the fact that stores kept them on the shelves means they didn't return them, which means that people were buying them. And people associated seeing that book be being on the shelf with it not being successful. So I'm really bullish on cover A. I think it's massively undervalued, and I think it has a lot of room to grow. 
Yeah, because we often talk about how it's good if someone gonna, someone's going to come into your comic book store and they want to buy number two. It's nice to have number one with it because it makes it easier to sell because yeah. people want to come in later in the arc. Also, this was going to be a mini series. This was meant to be a mini series, and then it got picked up for an ongoing. And the story's so good. We talked about issue number one. It went to like what seven printings, eight printings. Yeah, it, they just couldn't keep it in readers' hands. But either way, cover A number one. I agree with you. It's a great pick. Here we are right in that midpoint of the list, and we have a great pick for it. Last week, we talked about those Batman death of the family issues. Here we're talking about death in the family. This is the, that classic Batman issues, 426 to 429. This is the one we've talked about before in here with that Robin death, right? That's right. We talked about 428, and we've, you mentioned we talked about death of the family. Now we're talking about death in the family. We're talking about the original story that inspired the new 52 story that we talked about just last week. Again, this hits a lot of principles. Classic is classic, classic storyline, classic Jim Starlin, DC Comics, not something that a lot of people are even really familiar with his work over there. Um, and as well as Starlin's reputation for killing off major characters. I mean, killed Robin, killed Captain Marvel. That was kind of his calling at that time. Um, and I really think that this story and these books quite oftentimes found in discount bins. I mean, for years, I see these off issues. I say off issues, meaning not the death issue. $3, $5, and below. Um, I think we're getting to a point now where these need to be grabbed. New comic book collectors coming into the market need to understand how important this is. And it, we're also, again, to bring it back into what we're doing in comics right now, we're doing the three Joker story. And one of the Jokers that is very prevalent is the Joker, which is featured predominantly in this series. Of course, that top hat monocle wearing Joker, who will also beat somebody down with a crowbar. So that is, Spoiler. I think... <laughs> yeah if, if you haven't caught up with the last four years but that's one of those things that i think is going to allow this series to remain popular forever and i just have to believe brian i i we got a little taste of it in titans right there's some hinting going on um of what's to come there was some hinting in batman vs superman but we have to see the full-fledged scene play out in a film at some point. And whenever that does, this series is going to spike. So grab it now while you can afford it and while everyone else is looking at the next hottest variant cover. Yeah, definitely grab up these single issues. If you just want to read the story, the, the, the trade for it's been printed multiple times. Yeah, it's always sure affordable. It's like I said, I've said it before where at the time I was – Young and new in the comic book collecting, and I bought the trade thinking, well, it's got all the issues in it. It'll be worth way more. <laughs> but either way, the first, the first printing was in that uh, yucky newsprint type paper, too. But classic issues and definitely deserves a spot midway on the list at number six. Then next, coming in at number five, we get that what if number one. I like this for multiple reasons. Probably the big obvious one is the Disney Plus. But... This kicks off that classic what if comic book series. And within it, we get Spider-Man having some money problems trying to join the Fantastic Four. Yeah, and we know later on in the Fantastic Four storyline that Spider-Man did join the Fantastic Four. So this was actually kind of one of those first appearance precursors that we've seen show up in the what if series quite often. If you think about what if 10 with Jane Foster, for instance, as Thor. But the thing is, I think this book is being overlooked, Brian. When people started talking about the What If series coming to Disney+, Plus, I was a little surprised that immediately people started trying to speculate on which episodes would be featured and what corresponding issues would then spike because of the given episodes. And people have already gone out and taken their pick, but what they've omitted altogether is this storyline. And while I agree, that, yeah, I agree that this storyline probably isn't one you're going to see with I don't think that the first introduction we'd ever see in the MCU of the Fantastic Four would be in a animated role in a What If series. I could be wrong, but I would doubt it. But again, to me, this is the first appearance of What If. This is, this is like you said, the genesis. This is where it all starts. Um, and because of that, it's iconic, it's classic, it's important, and it's relevant to what's going on right now. And if you're going to make good investments, you've got to often zig when others zag. And this is one where... I, I'm very bullish on this what if property and I like the animated element of it and kind of the anthology series element where there's going to be a new episode every week. I think it could be very successful, but I think people are kind of swimming in the wrong direction. And I think that the way to look at this is this is a no brainer. 
this book will be popular. And this is another one. It's a $20 book. It regularly will sell for as much, but you can find it in those $5 boxes at conventions. I know we haven't been to a convention in a long time, but I have this belief that all those convention boxes are sitting there waiting on us, Brian, just full of keys waiting to be perused. This is one I would grab for about $5 all day, every day. Definitely. Then coming out just outside the top three at the number four spot, we get some more Disney Plus stuff. And we're talking Vision and Scarlet Witch, number one through four. But this is the 1982 miniseries. That's right. And a lot of people are focusing on the later miniseries, which went 12 issues and had some first appearances that are going to be relevant for this upcoming Disney Plus series. But they're missing out, again, on the same concept that we just talked about. And again, rather than just talking about issue number one, we're talking about issues one through four because we believe in selling a set. I think you can pick up issues two, three, and four for as little as a dollar or less. I've picked up issue number one for a dollar more times than I can count. I've regularly bought all four of these issues in the same dollar box where a dealer didn't even grab them and put them together as a set. They just left all four in a dollar box. So for $4, I'm grabbing this set all day because it's the first mini series of Vision and Scarlet Witch. And we know that they've got an upcoming Disney Plus series and there's a lot of talk about the fact that it's going to be a sleeper as far as popularity because it is going to be the series that introduces us to how we see the multiverse. Yeah, plus it's going to be like a family-oriented episode. I mean, family-oriented show. So get capture that bigger demographic, capture that bigger audience. And people are going to probably fall in love with some of these characters that they had no idea knew exist because they live outside of comic books. They're just watching a Disney Plus app. Absolutely. So we're not talking big money with this one through four series right here, but I think very easily this could be if you can buy all one, all four issues for say five or six dollars um, and you could easily turn this one around for 25, 30 or more once that series drops. Yeah. And you'll probably see more kids at Halloween dressed up as some of these characters. Think like Absolutely. Rocket and Groot before P Guardians of the Galaxy came out. Right, right. Vision becomes a star versus becoming just a background character. And the same with Scarlet Witch. Yep. Coming in at number three this week, we always have at least one book on this list. Normally, that's a little bit higher than others. And that's the one right here. And we're talking about Amazing Spider-Man number 31, which gives us that first appearance of Gwen Stacy. Keeping with the theme that we've had in this list, get it where it all began, right? Right. So here's my thing. Yes, this is an expensive issue. But if you really go and do some research on eBay about finished sales, especially in those mid to low grade areas, it's not as expensive as I think you think, especially when you start comparing to the first appearance of Spider Gwen, which is why we're talking about this. We're not talking about Gwen Stacy, the lovable girlfriend who eventually fell to her death. We're talking about Spider Gwen. And while I know it's a different earth and it was a later incarnation, there is no doubt, no doubt in my mind that Gwen Stacy that name is going to become very important in pop culture over the next 10 years. Um, we've already seen it begin with the Into the Spider-Verse animated features. I think we're going to see it go even further with the Sony slash MCU kind of collaborative movie process. We've already seen the, what the prices and the spiking happens in the secondary market just when people notice well after a movie comes out that a character was dressed similarly to what Gwen would wear. All of that leads me to believe that Spider-Gwen and Gwen Stacy is one of the most marketable characters in all of comics. I really think her and Miles Morales are the top two as far as the future of modern comics. And with that in mind, I think when you start looking at first appearances, I, people overlook this book. Now, there's also some Marvel Tales reprints, and you can definitely be on the lookout for those. Um, I, I definitely am a, a bullish on those, and I think they're much more affordable and even more overlooked because many of them are under five dollars but at the same point brian i've seen low to mid-grade copies of this book go under a hundred dollars and when you start to think about the three hundred dollars right now that's being paid for an edge of the spider verse two um and we're talking raw um you start to look at it from a dollars to donuts investment and say um i really think that you can swing this so i think this is a book that a lot of people would just write off and say it's out of my price range or uh, eh, it doesn't really play into to Spider Gwen. I, I think this will get residual value. No, it's not going to be the book, but it will get residual benefits of everything Spider Gwen ever does. So grab it now before people kind of make that connection. Yeah, and it, I mean, it would be fair to say that people were kind of making that connection when the first development news of like the Spider Verse and some of those other movies, people are going back picking up this book for a while. But it, like you said, it's kind of died off and it's one that's 
a little bit up there, but still affordable. Mm-hmm. Coming in at the number two spot this week, you heard us talking about some Justice League New 52 earlier. We are back at it again with Justice League number 50. This brings us towards the conclusion of that Dark Side War. In it, we get Dark Side resurrected, but even more importantly, we get Wonder Woman or Diana's twin brother, the first appearance of Jason. That's right. And that was what really spiked this book when it first dropped. Two covers, cover A, which features Dark Side prominently in the Justice League, as well as cover B, which is that John Romita Jr. cover. Now, that was enough to carry this book early on. So initial spikes and then it dropped. But this book is getting hot again, Brian, and people are talking about it, and it has nothing to do with anything you mentioned there. It's because, again, Jeff Johns dropped those nuggets of information about the three Jokers in this issue. So as collectors are really getting excited for three jokers. They really want the answer to this question. This and the old Countdown 31 from when the New 52 originally launched have been the two books that collectors have really latched onto and said, those are where the groundwork for this three joker storyline started. Both books written by Jeff Johns, it really makes sense. So this is one to pay attention to. And I think it's also one that's attractive for multiple reasons, because even if the three joker story doesn't, does it pan out the way you want it to? I'm buying this book right now for three Jokers and three Jokers alone because I'm very bullish on that story. And I think it can set up not just a, a short-term story, but the future of where we go with the Joker and possibly branching off into three different characters for us to chase three different first appearances. And w- won't that be fun? But what's great about this is even if that storyline falls flat on his face and turns into another Batman Catwoman wedding, guess what? Everything you mentioned about... Uh, Donna Troy's brother um, and about, you know, kind of he, another character with a good look kind of played off Wonder Woman very well. Um, it is definitely a character who I think could have some legs. That's a great backup option to have there on top of it. Again, I got to give props to, to DC comics. When you start talking about issues 30, 31, 40, and 50, that's, you know, four issues from issue 30 on, that are all must grabs when you see them in back issue bins. Um, That's something to be on the lookout for. And the moment you wait for it, week after week, the number one spot, this is one that's another classic that fits within a lot of these books that we've talked about, but we get Killing Joke. That's right, and this, to some people, they'll sit there and go, oh man, that's a boring number one comic. It's not the number one comic that we're used to seeing, but you know what? It's not a flash in the pan book. It is an utter classic. And yeah. Everything. It's, Disregard the animated movie. Yeah. Well, and we're going to talk about the animated movie in just a second. And that's the thing is this is a book who uh, stands the test of time. This is a book that was groundbreaking when it released. It's still groundbreaking today. It's still shocking to read. Um, it's also extremely thought provoking. Um, the comparison between Batman and the Joker uh, and it's also, again, an example of quite possibly one of the three Jokers very well could end up panning out to be like the first appearance of one of the Jokers. But either way, it, it is one of the basis of the Jokers that we're seeing play out in this three Joker storyline. On top of the three Joker storyline, we've got a successful Joker movie that we're coming off the heels of that a lot of talk about a Joker 2. And we're in the middle of the Joker War going on in the, with DC Comics continuity publishing with the whole Batman detective comics, all the Bat family books, the big master story written by James Tinian. All of that has everybody talking Joker right now. Not only that, we get the information that Joker is going to be the big bad in the Matt Reeves Batman trilogy. So everything's Joker right now, Brian. It's all Joker. And this is one to think about. Now you mentioned that animated feature and it did disappoint, but it showed me the potential Because just the animated feature surrounding this book was enough to spike this book up over three times where it's sitting at today. And I've talked about this a few times when we're covering this list. What that tells me is an indicator of potential profitability. It means that if this book comes into the limelight, again, it can do those kinds of numbers. This was regularly $150 to a $200 book during that that time period. It's dropped down well below $100. But it's a classic, it's a key, it's one to grab, and it's one that if that kind of Hawaiian shirt-wearing Joker ever shows up in a movie, you are going to find yourself in the money with this book. But a little Simpleman's Comics integrity caution for you, 
be careful for late printings. This yeah, book has green. this book has several late printings, and some of them you can't even trust the color because they use the same color as the previous. So another thing to check is check that inside cover where they've got the printing listed. But yeah, um, definitely, definitely make sure. Check SimpleMinsComics.com. I'm sure Brian's got the graphic up on the screen right now, but we'll give you an example of what that first printing looks like that you want to be on the lookout for. Yeah, and this book to me is very sentimental. On a couple videos on this channel, I've talked about how this is the favorite book in my collection. This is the first wall book I ever bought as a kid collecting comics. I remember growing up in Woodbridge, Virginia, there's a place called Tackett's Mill. It's a card and comic book store. And I saw that book up there on the wall, had that little white sticker with $27 hand, hand printed on there. And I did everything I could. I was saving up allowance. I was mowing grass, just washing my parents' car. Um, yeah, I kept doing all that things because par parents didn't give you that much money for doing that stuff back then. But um, then sadly, my grandfather passed away and he left each of us kids 20 bucks a piece. And that was enough to get that book for me. I had that book, stopped collecting comics, went to Marine Corps, went everywhere. Those books were just stored. Not even, that book was bagged and boarded, but it was in a Xerox box. Came back, got into comics, got those books from my parents' house, sat there that whole time, submitted it to CGC, and it came back a 9.6. I was happy with it. And it's still like the favorite book in my collection. And you have a very similar story to none other than Kevin Smith who often cites this book as the book that got him started flipping comics, which eventually helped fund his entire movie career as Clerks 1 was paid for with the equipment that he was able to sell his comic book collection. But the very first book he ever did a big flip on was walking into an LCS when this book had just come out, grabbing those killing jokes for cover price, knowing that he could flip them at a convention that weekend for $25, $30, $35. So, a lot, of, a lot of people have that sentimental origin story with this book, and that's why it's number one on this list, and that's why it's always going to be in demand. Yeah, and classic bowl and art within it as well. Oh, but yeah. there it is, guys. We have a bunch of great content on this channel. If you guys are just here for the first time, you're watching the top ten, but we have Last Call. We're talking about FOC books. We're covering books during the week. We have creator interviews. So if you're new, please consider subscribing and checking those out. We'll have playlists on the channel as well. But – there's our top 10 for you guys this week. What do you think about it, Jack? I think it's a great list. Good mix of uh, affordable as well as kind of like key value books. A little bit old, a little bit of new, uh, a little individual books, a little bit of sets. And we're hitting you with a little bit of everything. But either way, all great long-term plays, all books that can add value to your comic collection. Because we want you to buy them low. And if you got to sell them, we want you to sell them high. Right. We're always talking about community on this channel. So do us a favor, comment down below. Let us know. Do you have any of these books? What do you think about this list? What do you think about the overarching? We talk about that crate and that big master list. We got a good selection of books and be on the lookout because we'll have volume two of those books to collect in that ebook, right? Absolutely. Coming soon to simplemanscomics.com. With that being said, guys, this is Brian Jack with Simplemans Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video.